Hello and welcome to Nourish Your Biblical Roots, Special Edition. I'm Bishop Paul Lanier, Chairman of the Board of Directors for the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. And I'll be your host for today's podcast. We're broadcasting live from NRB, the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. And during our time together here, we'll be talking to some very special people on a variety of subjects, especially as it relates to Israel, to Jewish-Christian relations, and the work of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. Well, today I'm welcome... I'm just so excited to welcome two extraordinary men in the kingdom of God who have been and their fingerprints of excellence have been on broadcasting for decades. And um, one of them, David Clark, has been a member of the board of directors of the International Fellowship for so many years and is a dear friend and a mentor to me and uh, just really a spiritual father and I I, I just say that right here and now and I'm so grateful to to him and uh, Jerry Rose is a pioneer in Christian broadcasting and a television veteran for over 50 years an author and past president as is David past president of NRB gentlemen I can't tell you how grateful I am to welcome you to this edition of Nourishing Our Biblical Roots. First of all, tell me about NRB here in Orlando right now. How different does this look to the first time you gathered with a group of broadcasters? Well, it's it's, it's radically different. I, I remember, I think the first one I attended was at the Mayflower Hotel in Washington, D.C., And I think, if I'm correct, we had about 100, maybe 125 people at that convention. And that was in the the mid-70s. And uh, it was about that time then that I met Dave Clark. Mm. So our friendship goes back quite a ways. But Jerry, would you, uh, can I, can you share with me before we got on air a moment ago, you were talking about how NRB came to be and, and really, was forced to be. Well, yeah, it was because uh, it was in 1944. <clears throat> uh, the what's, What was at that time called the Federation of Churches, which became the National Council of Churches, went to the networks and said, look, you need some religious programming. Let us be responsible for all of your religious broadcasting. And so the uh, that's what happened. And out of that, you know, there came some good stuff, life mm-hmm. and land on my feet and so forth. But uh, then the Federation of Churches turned around and really banned all evangelical programming wow. because they, they controlled it. Yeah. And so uh, we didn't have a voice, wow. which in the long run uh, turned out to be a blessing. But so at that time, uh, there was a, a list of uh, people on radio, some of the voice names that mm-hmm. have become legendary. Uh, who said, we need to form an organization. Evangelicals need to. Evangelical organization that will give us access and wow. we can maintain that access. Mm-hmm. And out of that then came the National Religious Broadcast. So what was really an opposition and not allowing us to be a part of their game forced us to take it to another field and create our own. Exactly. Right. That's well, extraordinary. And to put it in a, a larger... Get up a little closer. To put it in a, a larger context, the first... Christian radio broadcast in America was a New Year's service in 1921. Wow. So, you know, 44 wasn't that much later, 1921. So between 21 and 1944, the evangelical broadcasting radio movement began to develop. And uh, and so, as as Jerry said, there was no choice but to organize. Mm. And, and as it, I know, it worked you, effectively. You both have been president of this organization, yes. and uh, in this com- uh, convention, Jerry is going to be awarded uh, as a member of the Hall of Fame, the NRB Hall of Fame, Broadcasters Hall of Fame, and also David has been elected to the Board of Governors. So, these are two men who bring such gravitas and such a, a spirit of excellence to media ministry. And so I want to talk to you now, as we've touched briefly on just the broadcasting itself, 
Talk to me about NRB and Israel. NRB and Israel. It's, uh, uh, well, we've, we have, as long, as long as I've been a part of this organization, uh, we have been strong supporters mm. of Israel. Uh, and for as long as I've been a part of this organization, every year mm. we've had the, the prayer breakfast. Uh, and right. as there has become more and more of a challenge, in Israel, mm -hmm. uh, as there has, especially as there has become more pressure mm -hmm. from here, the United yeah. States, uh, we have, we've made sure that uh, our members, and for that matter, the public understands that the National Religious Broadcasters uh, supports Israel. Mm -hmm. We're not against Palestine. We're mm -hmm. not against Palestinians, mm -hmm. but that we support Israel. We, because we have such common roots, mm. uh, and the common roots, going all the way back to Abraham. Yes, sir. Uh, and if you are a a Bible believing yes. Christian, yes, uh, then you have to look at it in terms of how does this how does this relate to uh, Israel and and the Jewish people. Mm. Well, and so we've taken that biblical position. And every year, the Ministry of Tourism would be represented here, as they are this year. And uh, every other year, the executive committee of the NRB would go to Israel as guests of Israel and meet with people like uh, 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 a, a foreign minister at that time, Jerry Benjamin Netanyahu, <laughs> right? And uh, the leadership in Israel understood something that Rabbi Yachel Eckstein understood, which is that some of the greatest supporters of Israel, mm. the state of Israel, the concept yes, of Israel yes, as God's chosen people. Why did God choose Israel? That's a sovereign question yes. he can answer someday. But the word says, he who touches Israel yes, touches the apple of my eye. Yes, and that's still true today. Absolutely. So the NRB has been a tremendous resource of support, of interest, and almost every other year, our executive committee would go to Israel. Wow! And and be uh, and be exposed to leaderships uh, in Israel. And David, you just brought up uh, Rabbi Yaquiel Eckstein of blessed memory. Let me ask you both, uh, and you're on the board and have been for many years of the fellowship. For both of you, what was your first encounter with Rabbi Eckstein? When did you meet him? How did that come about? When we, signed, when we signed our TV station on in Chicago, Channel 38, uh, word came back to me. Now, when you me, say we, that's your, person, your company? Is that what you're talking yes, about? I was the, at, at the beginning, I was the vice president, general manager. In 1979, I became the president oh, wow. of TV 38, which is now the Total Living Network. All right. When we signed on the air, uh, I, had, I got word that the Jewish community was concerned about a Christian TV station in Chicago. Well, there's a huge Jewish uh, presence in, in the Chicago mm -hmm. area. So I went to the, AD, uh, the, uh, the ADL mm -hmm. and I said, look, you know, we're starting a Christian station. Uh, it's important for Christians to know about Jews. We have right. common roots. We'd like yes. to, what can we do to yes. work together? Yes. So we, I, at that time I was working with a young man named Michael Richmond, who was the program director. And uh, Michael and I became good friends. And so we began to work to get programming on. And then he left. And then word came back to me that uh, there's a new guy, an Orthodox <laughs> rabbi. Oh, wow. And I thought, okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm real interested now. This is gonna work out. So I went to the ADL and I met with Yahio. And I said, I worked with your predecessor and we we're good friends. He said, yes, I'm aware of that. And I said, I'd like to work with you. Uh, but you're an Orthodox rabbi. I'm, a, I'm evangelical, which means that I'm an evangelist. So we still have common roots. So how can we work together to bring dialogue between wow. Christians and Jews? And he said, I think we can do that. Yes, sir. Yahil and I became close personal friends. Mm. Our family and I, I don't know how many Shabbats and, and oh, uh, Seders wow. that we shared with their family all the, all the way back when Yechel was just a young girl. 
Uh, so we, you know, That's we extraordinary. were extraordinary. Yeah, very close to Hill and to that family. Yeah. Uh, for years, and, and all the way starting back in the in the uh, about. 78, 79. Wow. There. So put, before put, he started the fellowship. Oh, well before he started wow. the fellowship. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Put this in the context that at Skokie, a suburb of Chicago, which had a lot of Jewish people living there, there was a protest by Nazis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. An anti-Jewish parade in Skokie, which the rabbi was, part, was at, saw. And so... The pernicious deal, the pernicious infection of anti-Semitism was there then and continues to be, sadly, in our world today, uh, arising more and more. So this was Jerry combining with the rabbi was a God thing. Oh, yes. To bring together Absolutely. people who, had have, who would have influence and access to the media. How did you meet him? Well, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was at, I joined CBN at a time when CBN was a great idea, but wasn't big yet. And, uh, and, uh, it worked pa out. Pat Robertson had always been pro Israel, yes. had stated that publicly. Yes. And, and the rabbi, I'm not sure exactly when, but early on, he became a regular on the 700 Club, yes. talking about Israel. You know, there's the a great story. There's a great story in uh, Rabbi's book, I believe it is, that when he was really kind of navigating Christian circles and evangelical leaders, he went, as you said, and, and shared the platform with Pat Robertson. And it wasn't long after that, and he was just sharing his dream of, of what he wanted to do with the fellowship of creating this, this organization, that he got a check in the mail from Pat Robertson. And I think, he, if I'm not mistaken, it was for 10 thousand dollars this is back in the early 80s which well which you know what that means that kept lights on kept the family fed and 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 that was that was after uh, the fellowship started yes but before the fellowship started uh Yechiel and i started talking about how can we develop dialogue wow the, the christian sensitivity how can we how can we bring yeah. together yeah uh around our common roots because i told them i said look the evangelicals are the supporters of Israel, oh, yes. you know, not the mainline churches. It's yeah. going to be Entirely. so. If you can, you, if you can help sensitize mm -hmm. the language and so mm -hmm. forth, and Yehiel and I then would go to wow. Jewish homes, uh, talk about that. So at breakfast one morning, uh, Yehiel said to me, "Do you think there is a place no. for an organization <laughs> wow. that could?" put together this kind of dialogue and I said yeah I do but I th you would have to do it because you've taken the time yes. to understand the evangelical yes. mentality and if you put something like that together uh, then I think it could work well out of that at that time it was the Holy Land Fellowship of Christians and Jews I was a founding board member oh. and I was a board member for about five years and through that then uh, we started putting together uh, meetings. We started going to, I remember standing in front of a fireplace in a very wealthy Jewish home. And one of the questions had been, how can we possibly support Jerry Falwell as, ah. as Jewish people? And I said, well, look, let me just tell you, Jerry Falwell is going to be Jerry Falwell, but he is a great supporter of Israel. There you go. So what if we help to sensitize and help people to understand you you know, the difference. Well, one quick story about that. Yachiel was invited to go to uh, Bailey Smith's church. At that time, a very controversial pastor in relationship to the Jews and was asked to speak. So Yachiel goes and he speaks at the church. He got a standing ovation. I mean, he got a standing ovation wow. at Bailey Smith's wow. Baptist wow. church. So after that, Bailey Smith came up put his arms around Yahil and said, isn't this young man wonderful? We should invite him back for a crusade. Oh my at goodness. That, at that time, Yahil stepped to the microphone and said, you know, we Jews have been to a crusade and it didn't <laughs> it work didn't out work. for us. <laughs> well, he, was he got another standing ovation. Yeah. But that was part of that 
whole sensitivity yes, thing. Yes. You know, Bailey, when he said that, he didn't really no. under, wasn't trying to be no, offensive, no, 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 but no. to a Jew. Yeah. So that was the kind of dialogue at that time we were trying. But that was to part of learning. You know, that people, was part of learning experience. With with so much of what we see now in cancel culture, we're we're canceling our opportunities to learn from one another. Exactly. And exactly. to be able to say, oh man, I just stepped into it, and I didn't mean to. I, I didn't mean to offend. Uh, and, and for him to be able to make a joke out of it, that was incredible. David, let me ask you something. You, you're part of the fellowship now, and you've been on the board uh, for a long time. This is our 40th year, and God has been so good. And it's just amazing to see all that's happened over the past, in the past several years since our beloved rabbi has stepped beyond the veil. What do you see for the next 40 years? <laughs> well, first let me say that that whenever Yahel came to NRB and we had a reception, it would be standing room only. Mm. And that, that happened, I don't know exactly, but maybe four or five years ago. And uh, the room wasn't big enough to hold people. So he began attending here. We had an Israeli breakfast. There was a visibility of travel to Israel. The Israel Ministry of Tourism was here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, uh, and so there has been a mutually beneficial relationship of NRB and the evangelical radio and television broadcasters. Mm. Uh, and uh, now, what lies ahead? Wow, that's a great question. Clearly, uh, the dis dissemination of information is changing. Yes. And uh, I just learned today that one of the uh, radio groups here that has 120 stations, I can watch it on, I can listen to it on, uh, on, on my television now. Wow. Uh, wow. So uh, everything's on the internet, and the internet, of course, is is dominating distribution of information, and uh, it's like anything else in the world. There's much good in the internet, but also, Bishop, there's a lot of bad in the internet. Absolutely, a lot of evil, and so we need to pray that the. Uh, but that you know what? I used to always say it's the same thing about a magazine rack. Well, yeah. You can go to a magazine rack in a Seven Eleven and find just about anything you're looking for. Yep. But if you're, if, if you're wanting to find something that, that's encouraging, positive, something about how to redecorate your house or raise children, you'll find that. If you want to find the negative and the toxic, you'll find that as this, well. This device, I think, will be seen as having had maybe more impact your phone. than the Gutenberg printing press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's possible, and there are, there are people here, there's a seminar here teaching people how to use, quali how to do quality news releases oh, yes. with well, their phones. Yeah. With their phones. And they're doing it. And doing an extraordinary so, job. It's hard to know exactly, but I'm confident of this. Whatever happens with technology, the Lord of the harvest, yes. if he hasn't returned, yes. will have us there. Well, tell me about the transition you saw. Uh, between uh, our beloved rabbi when he stepped beyond the veil and Yael stepped in. You know, I remember the first board meeting I ever attended was about succession. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is my first meeting yeah. and, and we're talking about the rabbi leaving. So I was I was. It like, seemed <laughs> a little premature, didn't it? Didn't but, it? Until but, it wasn't. You know, the, the wonderful story about Yael is she started licking stamps in That's the right. mail room. That's right. And, and for 13 years worked her way up through the organization. I like that. Yes. She didn't come in at the top. She yes. came in at the bottom and worked her way up. And the transition has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, Robin is here. Uh, Robin's leadership has been phenomenal in the United States. And Yael uh, has brought great people aboard. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the, the effect has been increased outreach and, thankfully, increased revenue, yes. income, gifts that we can yes. use to bless Israel. Yes. As you know, the board was recently there and yes. we, we saw, oh, I yes. still remember the uh, orphanage yes. where we had 12 little kids singing, most of them orphans out of the Ukraine uh, yes, sir. that we brought out. So, so all of that ministry, which is huge now in Israel and in the Ukraine and that area of the world, uh, has been a result of the seeds that were sown and yes. then the competence of leadership that Yael has brought well, uh, subsequently. One of the things, uh, when I think of Yahiel and Yael, uh, when we first started, uh, Yahiel was in a hurry. Uh, <laughs> he he was wanted everything <laughs> to happen in the first year. And I remember, I remember a board meeting 
uh, just two of us, we met with him and he was bringing his list of projects for the next year to us. Uh, he brought it and we looked at it. There were 52 projects on that list. Wow. And we looked at him and said, Yahil, uh, first of all, you can't achieve all of this and if you do, it'll kill you. Uh, so let's, put, let's put, pick five. And these are things that we are going to achieve this year. But Yahil, you know, his head was always in such front of a visionary. When he, walked, you know, he, he was always moving ahead. Well, he, such a visionary. And he wasn't he just was a visionary. visionary. He was a, he was a scholar. You know, mm -hmm. he wrote he wrote a significant book on what Christians should know about Jews. Wow. And to do that, wow. he took graduate courses yes. in Christianity. But you know, we're sitting here rightly celebrating an extraordinary man who founded this remarkable ministry, but. We can only imagine the resistance he encountered, even in his own community, and and we noted the resistance in our community. Trying to, uh, I remember the first time I and I tell the story all the time. First time I saw him on television, and he s said he was a rabbi, and to my knowledge, I had never met a rabbi. That sounds terrible, but I had never met a rabbi, and I thought every rabbi was supposed to look like the Rebbe in Brooklyn and looking yeah. like Moses. And so I was, that was my own ignorance and my, my lack of uh, engagement. And so I, none of us really, I suppose, can, can fully, but maybe you, you would, because you were with him, Jerry, back especially in those early days, some of the resistance he encountered and suffered in trying to even imagine having a conversation with Christians, evangelical Christians, and ha sitting down at the same table. That had to be a real challenge. Well, we both had challenges. Mm. We both had resistance uh, because a lot of the Jew, you know, I, I mentioned a minute ago, Jerry Falwell. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of resistance from the, especially the Orthodox Jewish community uh, of working with Christians mm -hmm. because they, you know, there was a lot of feelings about And, and there uh, still is and, uh, you know, <laughs> on both sides. Yeah, there still is on both we're, sides. We're, so Yahil was getting criticism from uh, the Jewish community saying, you know, uh, you really shouldn't be working with, with Christians, especially yeah. evangelical yeah. Christians. On the other hand, uh, uh, the Messianic community Yes. Uh, was saying to me, why are you working? Why are you working with the <laughs> yeah. Messianic Jews? Why are you working with an Orthodox rabbi and the ADL and putting something like this together? But the whole idea uh, was our common roots, <clears throat> taking those common roots <clears throat> and developing understanding. It was never the intention <clears throat> to, uh, to change everything. Mm -hmm. The idea mm -hmm. was we have common roots. Let's start there. Yeah. Let's start with uh, Abraham yes, was, sir. Yes, you know, sir. If, if you go from Abraham to Jesus, we have very common oh, roots. Yeah. Let's take those common roots and work through those and find a way to understand each other and support each other mm -hmm. and die alone. Which actually, Jerry, that's what he, he does in this book, what, mm -hmm. what Jews should know about Christianity. He, he, he emphasizes those common roots. And he, he was very good at that. Uh, the rabbi uh, had a happy countenance. Hmm. He was a friendly person. He reached out to people. And uh, that stood him in good stead as he gave leadership. And, uh, and uh, he, he was, was he a was, remarkable evangelist. He, he, well, he, and he was fun to be around, yeah. too. So yeah, yeah he was. But, you know, it, it was interesting because I recall a time, at that time, Abe Foxman was the head of ADL. And there was a major uh, controversy that was just about to break out into the national press. Uh, between evangelicals, and if I recall, I think Pat Robertson was involved in that, and uh, Abe Foxman, uh, and it was just about to break out into a, a national conflict in the press. Yahil called a meeting in Washington, D.C. At the, at the Senate building. Wow. And invited Jewish leaders, evangelical leaders in, uh, to work through that issue before it got to the national press. Wow. We spent a day, and it was an intense meeting. I mean, it was a very intense meeting. But we spent a day in the Senate building in Washington, D.C., <clears throat> with all of these leaders. Jerry Falwell was one of the people that was there. All day long, we worked on that. And, and by that afternoon, we had a joint statement that Abe Foxman, right. and I forget our representative, gave to the press 
that neutralized that entire Praise argument. God. I looked at that and I said, this is the measure yes, of success of what yes, we're doing. Sir. Yes, well, it sir. was about, I think it was about a year, year and a half, two years Bob after Cook. that, um, uh, that we did Wings of Eagles. I don't, think any, I don't think any of us expected the kind of response that we would get from Wings of Eagles. It just, it, it financially just blew the top off because wow. all of a sudden Christians responded in mass mm. around the United States uh, with the Wings of Eagles projects. And as a result then, it started moving toward that kind of assistance for, for uh, immigration and for uh, the, actually the yeah. Aliyah yes, coming sir. back into Israel. And it's interesting because that's still working. It is. We had a little lady stop by here Yes, the day before yesterday, and she said, I love your ministry. Every month I give wow. a gift to the <laughs> International Fellowship. Praise and she God. said, every month we have prayer for the International Fellowship in our prayer group at our church. So it's, it's still working. Still and it's working. still challenging people and attracting people. Oh, yes. And uh, if you've seen the work that we're doing in Israel now, yes, yes. You know, thousands and thousands of Jews have been, 700,000, more than 700,000 yes. brought to Israel. Many now are coming, and they come with nothing. Exactly they leave right. everything behind, usually. And if they're professionals, there's doctors, lawyers, scientists, mm -hmm. teachers, uh, they can't resume those okay. professional careers. So we provide some yes, activity sir. so they can work four days a week, earn something, exactly have right. some self-worth, a sense of self-worth, and we help them with their modest little apartments. Yes, because what they get from it, the Israel helps them, but it's such a, a small amount, they need more help. And thank the Lord, we're able to be part of yes, bringing are. them, and we're still bringing them, You Paul. better know it, sir. We're bring, in fact, you're going so soon somewhere, and you're going to bring some more. I'm going to do it. We were uh, in, in Ukraine just a few days ago getting ready to step into Ethiopia in the coming days and uh, getting a, a plane load of Jews and taking them home, and it's the goodness of God. Gentlemen, I can't thank you, first of all. I can't thank you enough for sitting at this table, but then I, I can't thank you enough for who you've been to the body of Christ and continue to be, and in particular, in, in not just the NRB, but as a whole. And, and as I've discovered in the past few minutes, both of you were so instrumental for providing rabbi friends and confidants and people that would believe in the vision that God had put in his heart. And that is such a blessing. And I thank you. And I wish you all well. And God bless you. Well, let me just say one thing to you, Chairman Paul. The Lord has brought you into this role here. We lost our chairman. He became ill. He'd been with us many years. And you were from a church that had been sacrificially supporting the ministry and you were invited to the board and through, through, through a, a set of circumstances that the Lord ordered, you become the chairman and your God-inspired leadership has helped us move and will continue to help us move forward. So as a member of the board, I commend our chairman, Paul Lanier, for the wonderful work he's done. And I would, I would just like to conclude, Paul, by saying I didn't know, really, what it meant that day when I went in and introduced myself to Yachil Ekstein. Yes, sir. But the, I'm grateful yes. for having yes. looked at what's happening now with this incredible organization, uh, that I had the opportunity yes. to be a part of, uh, of that. Had no idea what God was doing at that time. Uh, but uh, I'm just grateful for having had the opportunity to be there at that time and to be uh, a, a founding part of this, of what it's become. And, and when we speak of that, just one memory. I, uh, I was uh, a partner in a media organization and we produced three TV specials for the International Fellowship. And the first one was done at Yad Vashem. Wow. And it's difficult to do a special at Yad Vashem, but Rabbi Eckstein had a way, wow. and, uh, and that is still a memorable event. Yad Vashem, of course, is a museum to the martyred yes, Jews, yes, and uh, yes. he was walking through that, talking about it, and uh, it, it, it's more than just a fundraiser. No, sir. 
it's really a, 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 an encomium, a, a tribute yes. to what has gone on, and it's been a privilege to be part of that. Well, I think you can tell by listening to us, we could go on all day talking about the greatness of God and His hand, His multiplying hand upon this ministry and calling, raising up such an extraordinary rabbi. And we thank all of you who are listening now, watching now, for being a part of it. And we look forward to the next 40 years. God bless you. <laughs>